It's one of the most critical data workloads because data quality affects every downstream workload. Now, as new data is brought into organizations, data engineering teams have the jobs to process this messy data into clean, fresh, reliable data that fit the use cases that it was intended for. Often, this gets represented as a clean flow. But the reality is not so simple. The exponential increase in data sources and types happening inside enterprises means building and maintaining reliable data pipelines has become one of the more challenging parts of the whole data science and the data engineering work. The fragility of it all creates huge challenge for maintaining reliability. If a pipeline fails, it has huge downstream impact on all of the systems and the teams that rely on that data. This makes poor reliability extremely expensive. That's why I'm really, really excited to share with you a new project called Delta Live Tables, reliable ETL made easy on Delta Lake. Delta Live Tables understands the full graph of all of your pipelines. It understands the semantics of all of the transformations. It can schedule, run them, it can monitor them. If they break, it can relaunch them and make sure that they're reliable. It can automatically manage the infrastructure and everything they run on in a serverless manner. It can automatically connect the data that's flowing through your pipeline. And it can even test your data as it understands the data. It can let you make updates while the pipelines are actually running live in production environments. To tell us more about how this is done, I'd like to welcome back Michael Armbrust. Thanks, Ali. We've all been there. As a data scientist, you get a request from the CEO. He expects some really important analysis that is going to change how the business moves. And of course, they need it ASAP. So what is your job? You're given a whole bunch of JSON files stored out in cloud storage. And you're expected to quickly turn it into an interactive, explorative dashboard that will help them decide which direction your company should go in. And this, this is a pretty common problem. And you know, I think most data engineers are pretty good at the first couple of steps. You often start with SQL. And I'm just going to write this create table statement that loads in that raw JSON data and puts it into a table. And next, I'm going to do some transformations on it. Again, pretty easy with SQL. So I'll go ahead and read from that raw data. I'll parse timestamps. I'll join. I'll aggregate. I'll do some things to get it ready for analysis. And I can run all of this on top of Spark and Delta Lake. Pretty easy, right? Well, this is where it gets hard. They never want it just once. They want it to be updated over and over again every day with the freshest data so they can continue to use these insights to power the organization. So you're going to have to start worrying about dependencies. I need to make sure that I run different jobs regularly and that the raw data table is always updated first and then the clean data table is always updated second. You're going to realize that you can't recompute these tables from scratch over and over again. So what most people end up doing is rather than work on entire tables, they work on partitions. They break it up by date and then they build an engine that both understands these dependencies and can update individual partitions in the correct dependency order. As soon as you start building this, it gets a little bit more complicated because it never works on the first try. There's always transient failures in the cloud or other networking problems. And so you need to build checkpointing and retries. So that if something breaks, you can pick up from where you left off and you don't lose lots of work due to simple transient errors. And let's say you get all of that working. Well, even if you're really good at SQL, you still need quality checks. You need extra jobs that run on top of these results to make sure that they're correct. You need to set up monitoring and alerting so that if the quality checks are failing, you get paid so you can come in and fix it. You need governance. This is sensitive customer data that we're working with. It might contain PII or other regulated information. And so we need to build a whole system that tracks how data moves throughout the system so that I can report to regulators and make sure I'm meeting all of my requirements. You also need data discovery. I spent a bunch of time on this analysis. I want other people in my org to get value from the time that I spent transforming and cleaning this data. But in order for that to be true, I need to document it and I need to keep that documentation up to date. I don't know if you ever tried to find data by searching your company's wiki, but it's usually not correct. And then after you get all of this working, there's gonna be a new requirement. There's some new type of analysis that needs to be done. And so you're also gonna to need to build a system for doing backfills where you recompute all of this data from the beginning of time with some correction or with some new feature added on top of it. And as you can see, this is turning into a real engineering problem. So of course I'm gonna want version control so that if something goes wrong during that upgrade, I can always roll back to another version. 
And I'm going to want deployment infrastructure so I can easily take those changes that are happening inside of version control and push them into the cloud. But what you're going to notice here is the operational complexity is starting to dominate. I'm spending all of my time on tooling instead of transforming. And if I really want to be valuable for my organization, it should really be the opposite. The place you want to focus is on those transformations. You want to spend your time getting value from data. And that's why I'm really excited to announce Delta Live Tables. Delta Live Tables makes it possible to build production quality ETL writing only SQL queries. So you can see I took those happy familiar SQL queries from before and I've just modified them to add live. And the Live Tables runtime is gonna take care of all of those operational governance and quality concerns. And what that means is since you're spending less time on those tooling concerns, you can spend more time on getting value from the data. You can actually add extra transformations that tell your organization how the business is doing. And Delta Live Tables is not limited to just SQL. You can also mix Python with SQL in order to do advanced analytics and AI. So you can see in this example, I'm reading that clean data set and I'm handing it through a machine learning model and I'm doing scoring on top of it. And you can use all of your favorite tools inside of Python to do this. We have full support for pandas or for koalas if you want a pandas-like interface. But you might be asking yourself, this sounds too good to be true. How is it possible? Well, the way Delta Live Tables works is we actually take those queries that you write out, and rather than just execute them against a database, the Delta Live Tables runtime deeply understands those queries. And what it does is it analyzes them to understand the data flow between these different queries. And once it understands the data flow, you can start doing some pretty cool things. One really cool thing that you get is this idea of environment independent data management. What do I mean by that? You never wanna have just one copy of your data. You're gonna have your production copy, you'll have your staging copy, you might want a local copy when you're doing development. And because Delta Live Tables understands the lineage and because this lineage is expressed in an environment independent way, you see I'm not reading from a specific schema, I'm reading from the live schema, which is always correct and always up to date. So I can take the same set of query definitions and I can run it in development on my laptop against a small data set to see if things are working. I can run it in staging against a larger data set that you know maybe the last couple of months worth of data uh, to make sure that all of my analyses are working correctly. And then finally, I can deploy that same code with no changes into production. And I can do that with confidence because I've already validated that it works in these other environments. One of the really cool ideas that we're leveraging here that's been popular in a lot of data engineering projects recently is the idea that you should be treating your data as code. It should be a single source of truth for what's going on inside of your data warehouse. And I believe that this should be more than just the transformations. Some other things that should also be included in that code that defines your data are things like data quality expectations. So Delta Live Tables also adds this thing called quality expectations which allow you to specify what makes bad data bad and how you're supposed to handle it. In this case, I've added a constraint requiring that there's a valid timestamp and valid means you know, after some time period for my organization. This is more than just a, tr a traditional check constraint in a relational database because it has tunable severity. You can choose to just observe and record how much data is messy. You can choose to drop rows while recording how many rows are being dropped. Or if this is a critical table that you're reporting to regulators, you do have the ability to fail any a transaction that tries to load bad data into the table. But it's better than that because we also use that lineage information that I talked about in the previous slide to capture which row caused a bad row to be outputted and give you that information so you can do debugging faster. Another thing that I think should be recorded along with this code is documentation. You should be able to tell other people in your org where this data come from, what it's used for, how it was transformed, and that should be stored alongside the actual transformations. That way you're guaranteed that this information is always fresh and not stale. And finally, one of the nice features of Delta Live Tables is governance is built in. So when you record information about these tables, for example, in this case, I'm recording that this table has PII in it. That, along with all of the quality and operational information about execution, is automatically captured in what's called the event log. And you can use this information to record how data flows through your organization and also prove to regulators that you're meeting all of your requirements. 
So it seems pretty cool, but rather than spend more time talking about it in the slides, I'd like to jump to a demo and show you how it really works. So here we are in the Databricks workspace. And as you can see, we've got our kind of familiar create table as select statements here that are powering the, the ETL that we need to do. However, you can also see that this is a far cry from a production ETL pipeline. You can't just run the same CTAS statement over and over again. I could change this to create a replace table, but that would be horribly inefficient. We'd be re-ingesting all of this JSON data every single time we updated the pipeline. Instead, let's see how easy it is to turn this into a Delta Live Tables pipeline. So I'm going to start by saying create incremental live table. And what an incremental table is, is it's one that only processes new data that has arrived since the last time we did process. And to do this, I'm going to use the cloud file source. Cloud files is this really cool data source that can take any files stored on cloud storage, whether it's S3, ADLS, um, uh, or GCS, and automatically ingest them with exactly one semantics, no matter how big the data set is. So we'll read from slash data, and we'll say that it is JSON. And we'll go ahead and run this and get a preview of whether or not this works. So it looks like it's working. Data set looks pretty good. These timestamps don't look particularly normalized. Let's see if we can correct that in the next step. So now we're going to work on this table that takes the clean data and cleans it up. We'll make a couple of changes. I'm going to make this a live table as well. And I'm going to read from the virtual live schema. This virtual live schema is what allows us to do our dependency magic. This is substituted at runtime with the correct version of raw data for whatever environment I happen to be running in. So we've said create live table seems pretty good. And we'll go ahead and run this to see if it works. Looking pretty good, but we're not quite done yet. We want to make sure that we have data discovery also taken care of, as well as data quality. So I'll go back here and I'll add comments. So I'll say that this is raw customer data ingested from JSON. And we'll go down here and we'll put a comment on this one as well. We'll say this is customer data with timestamps cleaned up. And I also want to make sure that I got that timestamp parsing right. I don't know about you, but that's something I often mess up. So let's put an expectation on this. So we'll say constraint, valid timestamp. This should be familiar syntax to anybody who has worked with uh, constraints in traditional relational databases. And instead of check, we'll say expect. This is what allows us to have that tunable severity that we were talking about earlier. We'll say we'll expect that timestamp is not null. So now that we've taken care of our governance concerns, let's go ahead and make sure this is still correct. And then we'll switch over to the Delta Live Tables interface to actually run this. So I'm going to go over here, and I will click Start the Pipeline. And what this is doing is it's taking that code that I just wrote. It's rather than just executing it into the database, it's analyzing each of those queries and building a holistic data flow graph that understands the dependencies between each of the tables. And this is not just a process that is going on here in the UI. It's actually also all being recorded into the event log. The event log is displayed here, but is also stored as a Delta table inside of your account. So you can come back and understand how this has been running in the past. And so we can see it has started execution. It's cited the graph. We've got a view of our two different tables. And this is running now. And while it's running, let's take a look at some of the data that's stored inside of the event log. So you can see it records all of the different actions that users take against the pipeline, as well as lineage and provenance information about the data uh, that, that's being processed. So let's go ahead and take a look at one of these flows. So if we take a look at the raw data flow, we can see we have all of the details of where this pipeline is running, which pipeline it is, the names of all of the different flows, the schema that is being produced, the explain for the query plan that is being run. And so this is a wealth of information. And it also has that data discovery. And much of this information is also available here inside of the UI. So you can see exactly what this data set is, what it means, what its schema is. And we can see this one just completed there. Zoom in a little bit. And there we go. So it ran. But we're not quite done yet. I want to show a couple more things first. 
Uh, one thing we should take a look at is that expectation that we have. So let's go ahead and look at the quality information here. And so you can see we did a pretty good job, 99.1% uh, of, of the, the timestamps parsed. So it seems like I just have a little bit of messy data that I can go and inspect later, but I can now publish this data set with confidence, knowing exactly what's going on under the covers. One other thing I want to show is incremental computation. If I run this pipeline again, it's going to do exactly the same thing it did before. It will go out, fetch that code, figure out the dependencies. But before it starts running, it's going to look at the checkpoints for each of these tables. So it will understand what data has been processed and what data needs to be processed. And so you can see the second run took only five seconds to complete. So a pretty dramatic improvement over 50 seconds in terms of efficiency. And this works for any streaming data source supported by Spark. Pretty cool. So just to summarize what we've seen here today, Delta Live Tables is a new system that's going to make doing reliable ETL easy on Delta Lake. It enables your data teams to innovate by giving them a very simple development experience where they're just writing declarative queries in SQL or Python. You can ensure accuracy with the addition of data expectations so that you know the data you're producing is high quality. And together, the fact that you're not dealing with all of these operational concerns anymore means that you can grow and scale your organization rapidly. If you want to see more, I encourage you to check out the public preview. There's a link on the screen. We're signing people up today. And now that I'm not spending so much time dealing with data pipelines, I can spend some more time hanging out at the lake house. <laughs>